Okay, test one, two. Let's see if, uh, if as I <clears throat> am recording the screen, if I can go ahead and bring up my command shell and start IPython. First thing, before I start IPython, I'm going to make my screen bigger. And I'm going to type IPython, I-P-Y-T-H-O-N. And it's going, to, it's going to load up, and I will get my IPython prompt. And there's just a couple of pieces of, of functionality for IPython that I want to demonstrate for you <clears throat> here so that you can uh, take advantage of these things for yourself. And it's a lot easier to show it than it is to write this down. So this is what I'm doing. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and load up uh, SynPy, and I'm going to load up the uh, matrix option from SynPy, and then I'm going to show you a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to show you, though, the first thing I'm going to show you is how to turn on logging. So I'm going to go uh, percent log start. Okay, now this is activating auto logging, and what this is going to do is it's going to create a file called ipython underscore log dot py in the current directory that you're in, which is, uh, in my case, C documents and settings backslash Jeff. Okay, so now it's keeping track of everything that I type. So I'm going to go from SynPy, import, import star. Now just to remind you, this way of, of, uh, of entering SynPy, of loading SynPy, this loads all the, the uh, command names, function names, class names that are in SynPy into the current namespace so that, so that with Python I don't need to say what module they came from. They're all just right there to work with. I hit enter. And uh, so it's loading up everything that's in SynPy into memory, into the Python environment, into the current namespace is a way to say that. And uh, then it comes back without an error message, and I'm good. And I can go from, sorry, from SynPy dot matrices, import capital M matrix. Okay, now I can create a matrix object. A equals matrix. Um, let's say just a simple two by two matrix, one, two, three, four. Now, it didn't give me an error message, so I assume it was there. I'm just going to make sure it's there by typing the A variable, and there it is. Now, notice the following thing. If I type A period, and then I hit the tag key, I'm going to hit the tag key on my keyboard, and I get all the different methods that are associated with this. A, which is an object of type matrix. So if I wanted to, for example, know how to do A inverse, I can go A inv and then tab on that. And there's, okay, so this gives me all the different methods that start with the letters I and V. If I'm interested in the inverse command itself, I'm going to put a question mark there. And putting the question mark on it queries uh, Python for what that is going to be. And this, this gives me some help text that lets me learn how to use the a in so that's cool so let's say i'm going to set type a underscore in now i'm creating a new object equals a dot inv and since i'm making a method call i have to include parentheses there. now i will query the thing that's in a in there's there it is so the original matrix i had was one two three four and apparently the inverse is minus two one three halves minus one half if i multiply a times a in and I get the identity matrix, and it turns out that it's commutative, so I can multiply a n times a as well. And it's still commutative. All right, at this point, I'm going to exit IPython. Uh, percent quit. Do you really want to exit? Yes. Now I'm going to look in that directory, and if I look in the directory, I see this IPython underscore log dot py. And so I'm going to type Python underscore log dot py. And there is a, um, a listing of all the different commands that I ran. It doesn't show the outputs, but this is these are the inputs that I could do. For example, uh, I could save this as a Python program. So if I would invite you to figure out how you could look at this logging to see how to get the outputs listed as well, um, that would be really cool. And make me very happy, and then we could tell everybody else how to do it. It might be that the way you could do that, oh, here's another possible way to do it. I'm in a command shell, 
in Windows, I might be able to edit and then mark. Maybe I can just go ahead and select all this. Like that. And then I'm going to go uh, edit, copy. Edit. Now I'm going to open up a notepad window. I'm going to find a notepad. So I'll open up accessories, notepad, and go edit paste. Ah, and there's my session, and I can think of it. So I just answered my own question. But look, maybe you can find a way that's more elegant. Anyway, uh, that's a little bit of a tidbit on how to use IPython. Okay, I actually did a little bit more exploring, and there is a more elegant way to handle outputs, and this is the way we're going to do it. So I'm going to start IPython here. Oops, get in there. I P Y T H O N. And uh, the um, way to do this is just type log start minus O. That means catch the output. And then I'm going to save this to a file called jeff.txt. Okay, now it's activating auto logging, current session state plus future input is saved. jeff.txt, and then output logging is true. Now, for example, I'm not going to bother with loading SymPy and all that stuff. This is easy. I'm just say A equals 1, B equals 2. Now, what do you think I should get if I type A plus B? A plus B is 3. How about A over B? What's it going to be? You should know now. Is it going to be 1 third? Is it going to be 0 0.3? Is it going to be um, 0? What are we going to get? 0. Why is that? That's the mystery. Quit. Yes. Okay, now if I do a directory, I've got my jeff.txt right there. See it right there? And I'm going to type jeff.txt. And there it is. A equals 1, B equals 2, so it captures the input lines the way they did before. So this is now saved as, this is, this is valid Python input. And the output is, for number 3, is 3, and the output for number 4. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't number the output lines. That's okay. If you do that, I'll know that you got it. And then, then there's that the output number four was zero, and then finally quit. So that's all I wanted to add to this, and then we're all done.